Hey guys, it's me, Jessica, and today I'm talking about Trials of Apollo, The Hidden Oracle by Rick Riordan. Um, I absolutely love this book. I started reading it, I stopped at maybe 100 pages, and then I just finished it all yesterday, and I absolutely loved it. Couldn't put it down, obviously. So, quick non-spoiler section right now. Zeus punishes Apollo by making him mortal, and Apollo has to go through some trials in order to become a god again, and that, that's really all you gotta know. I mean, it takes place in the Percy Jackson world, obviously. It's amazing. If you haven't read it, I suggest you do so. It's so good. Alright, so, spoilers. Here we come. The one thing I was most excited for about this book was Apollo's character development and how he was going to come from this like narcissistic, um, selfish god into this kind of, not really a human being, but someone who understands what it's like to have a mortal life and to care about people and things like that. And that's, that's what happened and that's what I was really happy about just how he started caring about his kids a lot more, which is odd because he's an 18 year old and he has like kids, but he's a god. I love Apollo, I love his character development and how he wants to search for Meg and he cares about Meg and, and he does, he wants to go alone so then no one can, no one else will get hurt. I just, I love, I love his character development so much. I feel like that was the really big part in this book was his character development and how he became more of a caring person. I was I was really happy with um with Nico and Will and how they're a couple and they bicker they bicker. Oh my god, I love it so much. I love it a lot. I think that that was one of the parts that made me really happy when that came out. I was just like, yes. Yes. Thank you. Um another thing that I really liked was when they brought Percy in because Percy, I would love Percy to be my big brother, and I honestly think if I was a demigod, I'd be the daughter of Poseidon, so I would, I just, I want Percy to be my older brother, because I love him so much, and I don't want to take him away from Annabeth, because I love them too much. I'm really excited for the next book, especially since Leo is back, and I like how they set up a line so that everyone can just, like, punch and slap and, like, welcome Leo back from the dead. And then Calypso's there, and Calypso doesn't have her magic, which is, I feel like it's going to become um, something that is brought up in the next book. He is struggling with not having her magic, and Leo feels really bad about it. But I like how they're a couple, I I mean, in within the book, you don't get to see a lot of their interaction as a, like a couple, because they have a little small part at the end, but I still like them. So I want to talk about Meg. Meg is, oh my gosh, I didn't know how I felt about Meg in the beginning, but as the book went on and they started going through the, the, the labyrinth for the death race, I started liking Meg a lot more. And then um, when Apollo was talking about how she was trained as a Roman, but she's the daughter of Demeter and not the Roman Demeter, I was I was very confused. I was like, so her stepfather is someone who's Roman. And then when Apollo was talking to, I think it was Will, and he says, tell Chiron that the um, Roman emperors have come back. I'm like, no. Rick Riordan is not going to do this to me. He is not going to make Meg stepdad one of the emperors. And guess what he did? He did. No! Rick Riordan is so amazing as an author. I mean, he's been planning. He's kind of been planning this since book one. When Luke is like, I have people who are funding me. And I remember reading Sea of Monsters and thinking about that, but I just kind of forgot about it. And now that it's an actual thing in the plot of Trials of Apollo, it's just kind of mind-blowing how from, like, almost book one, these emperors have been working in the shadow, and it's been foreshadowed this long. That That's some amazing writing right there in order to do that, because... I mean, you gotta ask yourself, how did Luke get all the money in order to get his yacht, to get all of the supplies he needed and all this stuff, and now... And now we know it's these three emperors, Nero, uh, we don't know the other two yet, 
I'm really excited to figure out who they are. I don't know if Zeus is if Zeus knows and has a plan. I don't know if he does. And if he does, he's he's not sharing it at all. Well, that's, it's it's Zeus. I'm really excited for the next one. I can't wait for more Leo Valdez sass and the amazing couple that is Calypso and Leo. Um, I kind of want to learn more about Apollo's old loves because he has really two great ones that he had in his life. And I hope he finds happiness again. I mean, I really am rooting for Apollo. I love him. I love all the characters. I love everything about this book. Except for that twist. Except for the Nero, the Megan Nero stepdaughter thing. Alright, that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, subscribe. If you've read Charles of Apollo and you have something to say, or comment down below. The next book I'll be reading is Jacoby by William Ritter. Starting that buddy read now. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.